Hey everybody, what's up? I just want to let you guys know that this is uh, the patch 2.3 prophecy update and I'm just going to be talking about everything there is to talk about it. If you don't know who I am, I'm Xenocide Genius and um, I've been part of the Path of Exile streaming YouTube community now for about two years and change since January 2014 I've been doing this. And I wanted to say for the first time, welcome. I have never recorded this on YouTube before. I always do these live on Twitch and I usually play all sorts of copyrighted music because I love that crap. So right now you listen to Monster Cat. So if any of this sucks, I'm going to turn it off and we're not going to have music at all. Just a heads up. Just a heads up. So I'm trying to actually give you guys at YouTube the things you miss. Or if you've seen me do these live on Twitch before. Hi, Mom. Uh, now you can finish watching it at home on YouTube when you're at work. So if you wanted to know anything I felt about something, you can always go back and browse it on YouTube. I'm going to try and do these for every uh, thing. Even if it's a four hours long hype discussion, everything breakdown. I'm going to split it up in probably half hour segments or hour long segments. So that way you guys can hear my information. And if you ever want to come to my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Genius, there'll be a link below. Um, yeah, you guys can click that, toss follow, and you can watch whenever you want live. So let's do this shit. Apparently the music's a bit loud. Okay, it ain't getting quieter than that. Wait, let me do this. Hopefully that's good enough now. I turned up my gain, let me turn up my microphone. This is this is the hardcore shit right here, boys. Blue Yeti, properties, levels. Okay, that's pretty loud. Why are you spamming that emote? What the heck? All right, let's do this. So, Prophecy is a content update to 2.3, and it will have the Prophecy Challenge. Which is a content update for everyone watching at home. Currently, we're in Path of Exile Ascendancy. Ascendancy is the name of the expansion. The previous expansion was Awakening. That was the Act 4 release, before we had Forsaken Masters, Sacrifice of the Vow, things like that. This is Path of Exile Ascendancy. Now, Path of Exile Ascendancy has a subcontent patch, called Prophecy, so in addition to that of Ascendancy. It is not a new expansion, so if you liked everything about Ascendancy in terms of the classes, the, the release of the subclass system, that is here to stay. But if you didn't like anything about Parandis, those annoying gold monsters that shotgunned and were bugged, don't worry about that, that's gone. But everything you liked about the classes is here to stay. Now Prophecy, if you don't know what Prophecy is, that's the Parandis of this league. So maybe instead of gold monsters, we'll have something else. Apparently, they're going to be these edgy purple things that look like the Eye of Cthulhu and fucking edgy shit at Hot Topic, which is cool. Let's go into the edgy shit because we haven't had a color scheme like this in Path of Exile yet. And to be honest, I was tired of gold. Apparently, Skype wants to talk to me. All right, so let's kick things off with the Prophecy trailer. So we're going to watch YouTube within a YouTube do it. And 1080p on this fatty. Hold your ass. Okay. Purple. I see a need in you. A need to peer into the future. For a gift of silver, I can grant you answers. Thank for a crew when she's is that Doldre again? So it seems to be everything that's curses and So this this league's gonna be big time around curses. The in chaos. Fortune and power. Yours for the taking. If you know which path to travel. I can show you. Join me on this journey into the unknown. Oh, that was awesome looking. Why is the bird there? Whoa! The damage! This poor guy's like level one. I see fire. Violence. Oh, these graphics. Death. Glory. It is prophecy. Oh 
What is that? What? So curses and chaos, it seems like. And apparently she saw fire too, so I guess there's gonna be some kind of fire. All right, so let's do this. June's 2.3.0 content update marks the start of both standard and hardcore version of Prophecy League. So again, we're no longer gonna have differences. We are one of the same. <sighs> I think it actually went very well. The only complaint I had about Parandus League, standard and hardcore being the same, is the most build enabling unique we no longer have access to, and that's Veranastra. Veranastra, at least as of right now, from what I'm reading, there may be in the bottom, so everyone at home in the YouTube comments before you get your little nerdy heart on. As of right now, I don't read anything about Veranostra, so that makes me sad pants. Maybe it's coming out. I don't know yet. I haven't read you have shh. Quiet and listen. Now, I was the the differences between hardcore and softcore, there should be none. And build enabling uniques I also think should be out entirely. Now, overpowered uniques, things like that that just only enhance your build, i.e. Skyforth and things like that. No, Skyforth is a permanent part of the game. But Uniques where they're just like, whoa. Vol, Vol's Devotion is considered to be build enabling for a while, but now there's other ways where you can get it and it's not necessary, such as the Hierophant and many other things out there. So if it's if it's super OP, yeah, let it stay behind in previous leagues. You have to work for it. But things like Veranastra where they're just like cool, edgy, or uh, Rigvald's Curse, the crit face breaker neck, there's no reason why those shouldn't exist permanently. No more hardcore softcore bullshit. Just introduce them to the game so we can have fun with them. Let's keep going. These leagues have uh, self-contained economies and provide an opportunity for you to enjoy a fresh st start and demonstrate your master of Path of Exile. So again, it's a temporary league, which is good because it means it has an end, an end to it. It's not the the nine gag of Path of Exile like standard league. Did I say that loud? Shit. That's okay. Some people like nine gag. If anyone there... At home, like Thine Gag, you can admit it now on Twitch or in fucking YouTube. So we can all have a, I mean, so we can give you a thumbs up. All right. What would you do if you knew what, um, what would you do if you knew what lay at the end of your path? If you could glimpse your future, if you could change it for a small gift of silver, you can. Together, we will change the stars. Together, we will rewrite your prophecy, Cap of Pride. I think they forgot to add that part. Uh, Nav Navali, the... Hantug of the Karui. Yeah, you know, there's one thing I want to say about GGG, and I have much, much respect for. Anytime you throw in a Karui, they're gonna piss you off with how to say it. Like, for instance, the Aro Hungui Moon's presence, or the Mahu's Flame Advance, or the Tahoa's Forest Strength. Yup. Did I mention the uh, unique map? Go to the unique map here. I'll put back on that music. So let's go to that unique map, right? That's the um Waka Wairu Tuahu Strand Map. At least you get to say strand map. But they got the Waka Waka Wuka 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 Tukabu. Alright, and they got the Ruka Tuka Tiki amulet. And now we got the freaking mother of it all. Where the hell is she? Freaking Hongtugu of the Karui or whatever, I mean. At least they're consistent with that shit. Fuck, man. They got their own language over there. I could see them like, you know, like we talk on Twitch and we'll be like, Kappa, ha, 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 Dan's game. Those motherfuckers walk around the office and they're always like, Hunga to go, bitch. And you're like, yeah. Wahoo, wahoo, taku map. I know somebody over there at GGG is using that lingo. And you're probably laughing right now if you're from GGG because it's true. Busted. <laughs> The Waka Flocka Obama map. You will encounter Navali in each town you visit as you explore Ray Class in the Prophecy Leagues. Cross her palm with silver and she will tell you the future. I think we already read that. Divining a prophecy for you to fulfill. These prophecies will take you to a, the furthest reaches of the continent as you strive to achieve your destiny. Fulfill your pros uh, prophecy. Prosophy? It's like, excuse me, Ossifer. I'm not drunk. 
fulfill your prosophy. Approximately one monster per area drops a silver coin. Naval will exchange one coin for a vision of your future. This prophecy, along with up to six others, is stored in your prophecy screen. So we had six edge quests. Some of these prophecies affect specific locations of your travel. The Val invasion substantially alters the Lunaris Temple. Others are fulfilled when you meet various conditions. Sometimes a prophecy yields a desirable reward. Other times a prophecy is the reward. Monstrous treasure. Uh, fills the map with strong boxes rather than monsters. Oh my god. So, what these are, you put them in the map device, it seems. And they allow you to alter things. So, in True Path of Exile style, you can pay Navali to turn your prophecies into items that are tradable. This allows you to delay your fate or even capitalize on it. So, for instance, right here... You will, fill Zana, you will find Zana and complete her mission. She will reward you with double reputation and favor. What's the most annoying thing about Zana? Level 80. What's the second most annoying thing about Zana? Finding her. Guess what? You could find her, you could put this in a T15 map, and guess what? When you're done, she gets double the experience. And favor, so that way you could be a fucking Minecraft edge master and build your shit that you love so much about Zana quicker. Holy fuck. So you attach this to a map. Done. Whew. Prophecy page. Prophecy page. Map. Same shit. It augments what you're about to do. Let's keep going. Plague of rats. You will discover a series of indoor chambers flooded with rats. Now, is that going to do like something with rat's nest? Is that what's going to happen? We don't know. So it's like something that we need to figure out. Also... GGG plays a lot of uh, Magic the Gathering. Busted! Motherfucking busted! How about that? BAM! It's an homage to Magic the Gathering. Plague Rats has powerful toughness, each equal to the number of Plague Rats in play. So maybe the, the more you kill, the weaker they become? Is that the gimmick behind it? How insane is that shit? So this is uh, pretty, pretty crafty of them. I'm going I'm to send this to Chris right now. I just messaged him on Skype. I see what you did there, and I linked this. So, an homage to... Uh, the Dreamer's Dream. So, what is that called? The Dreamer's Dream is... Inception. You will enter a map and slay a powerful that has made it its home. Makes sense. Inception. The master seeks help. So, there'll probably be one for each Forsaken Master, and then the silver coins they were talking about. The Feral Lord one. You will encounter corrupted animals. Oh wait, whoops, whoops, whoops. Prophecy chains. Some prophecies unfold a multi uh, as multiple parts, forming a prophecy chain. Completing one stage of these prophecies unlocks the ability to later acquire the next stage. So, in order to get to one, it's, this is honestly how the map system should be. In order to get to two, you must do one. Cool. Each of these prophecy chains culminates within a valuable reward, or a component that will allow you to face the Pale Council. Many of these rewards are unique items new to Prophecy or from or from past Challenge Leagues. So it's a way we could get Legacy items again without pulling teeth, but pulling teeth. That's cool. Okay. I don't mind having to work for previous League items, kind of like Parandis had you do it. I really don't mind, as long as the monsters aren't bullshit. I, the problem with Parandis wasn't Kadiro. The problem with Parandis was the monsters were just either a joke or insane or they were, couldn't kill them or they shotgunned. If the as long as these these edge lords here aren't fucking imba as fuck, even though that's the raider or the ranger. As long as the what what we're fighting, whatever this is, the pale council isn't imba, well you should be fine. Imba means imbalanced. And my second biggest problem with Parandis was the solo self found challenge did wasn't really solo self found because you could reset the instance 800 times until you had uh, Kadiro with freaking lightning coil on it. You know what I mean? So it's like 
The solo cell phone concept had nothing to do with GGG, but the community tried to do something great during the worst possible time, in my opinion, to do it. What's the point of calling it solo cell found if you reclick the instance 800 times till you get your item? It takes away the whole solo cell found feel. But that's nothing Prandis could have done, that's the community. But for sure, if the mantras are tuned right, this could be very, very good. Let's keep going. The League's ultimate encounter can be reached by completing four separate prophecy chains and combining their results. One of these changes shown below. The key. So right here is the Feral Lord. When you complete the Feral Lord, you go to Feral Lord 2. When you complete the Feral Lord 2, you get to Feral Lord 3. All the way up to whatever chain they have. And from there, you get one of the keys. When you get all four keys, you get a Siri archetype, I'm assuming. Now the cool thing about this is... Instead of it being gated on RNG, it is gated on your ability to do the content. And I think that's some of the best ideas ever. RNG gating, such as the map system, really isn't very fun. But if you make hard content available, now it is fun. So for instance, if you want to do one of the, whatever the archetype bosses of this game, you must earn the right to do that. I like that. I like that a lot. Yes, V is five. Thank you. I am, I'm well aware that V is 5. There are people in, in Twitch. I learned that in the third grade. But I said the Feral Lord 1, 2, there, I don't see 3, but there's 5. There might be more after 5. But okay, if I did say that, I know that 5 is through, not 3, but V is 5. Cool. Onward. Faded unique items. Many of Path of Exile's unique items tell a story. Some of these stories are unfinished. Certain prophecies will guide you to wield one of these items as you complete its destiny. The item will be permanently imbued with a new power and a new name. Okay, this is one of my favorite things about this league. We were just complaining, slash bitching, for lack of a better word, on the most recent State of Exile, Rimnor's gloves have got brought up. Now, those gloves have been the same since forever, and they are such a steaming pile of sugar plums, man. I see sugar plums that are a steaming pile, and I'm like, fuck that. I don't want to swear, so... Let's keep going. So let's talk about these. Death's Opus. More like Death's OP. Us. Death Bow. Um, it's Death's Heart, but the gimmick is it fires two additional arrows rather than the one. So you could corrupt it for three additional arrows if you're playing a non-crit build. Or even Assassin. If you're playing a crit build, elemental crit build, this is very well BIS. This very well could be BIS for some builds. That's pretty fucking insane. So elemental builds, they don't care about very much other than attacks per second, crit chance, global crit multi, and arrows. They'll get the elemental damage everywhere else. This is insane. Wall of Brambles, play vest. Now I just want to share something with you. Bramble Jack is the biggest fucking joke, one of the biggest jokes. But Bramble Jack with plus 2,000 armor at level 30 is fucking stupid. Now why is this fucking stupid? Let's just go here to my handy dandy little notebook. Uh, get out of this chieftain because he's 3 edgy 5 me. We're going to go to what I consider to be the most overpowered two-pointer in the game. Let's read this out loud, okay? Armor received and body armor is doubled, which means it's a separate multiplier from all increased added together and becoming a multiplier. And it's a separate multiplier from determination. So at level 30, you can have about 15k armor. Wow. Wow. Good thing Bramblejack 5 link is now OP. And until you get your Celestial Jester card crafted or you get your 6 link glorious plate, you're done. You don't have to wait online whispering everybody on peewee.trade for that level 35 armor chest piece that's pure armor that you have to chaos spam anymore. You buy a Bramble Jack, you 5 link it, and you are literally done until you're at your 6 link. You're done. You're done until your 6 link. How freaking awesome is that? It's So Tabula Rasa, Bramble Jack, Celestial Justicar, Glorious Plate. Done. How ins We actually have gear progression in the game now. Some people will stop at Bramblejack because they don't think they'll ever get a 6 link. And they're okay with that. So now, we got that at level freaking 30. Chris says it wasn't intentional. Plague rats. Beautiful, beautiful chess piece. Let's keep going back now. So from here we got Karui's Charge. Karui's Charge instead of Karui's Ward. It now grants, I'm assuming, somewhere in the range of 20% attack speed. I don't know the exact variance. 
So I think just 19% is shown that not everything will be static like 2000 armor or static like plus two arrows, but it's said it could have some variance for perfection's sake. Being having a perfect piece of gear is very important to some people, and they will take the time to find that perfect piece of gear and spend extra cash for the literal min-max. Min-max, uh, when your character has the minimum, it's, it's just a code word for efficiency. You have the best piece of gear in every slot, and sometimes you'll pay for per perfection. Blah, 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 perfection. Challenges and rewards. Level 30, man. Level 30. How the gear progression works is for us to figure out. So the beautiful thing about GGG is this company gives us the, the full control. Blizzard, on the other hand, they give you stepping stones. That's why I'm not here to talk bad about Blizzard. I'm here to talk good about POE and GGG. GGG lets the players figure out the game. For instance, Chill the Corruption when it first came out. What? Thou Spark all of a sudden was an overnight thing with Call of the Brotherhood. They give us the tools. Those tools may not be balanced, but they want us to figure out their game. They want us to break the game. They give us these these all these skill tree things so we can figure out what is the best. And then once we get used to that, they dynamic meta shift us into something entirely different. For instance, for the longest time elemental proliferation was godly. Evasion builds were godly. Before evasion it was armor. Now armor and lightning coil are great. Uh, what else is, for a long time, mind over matter was the entire meta. The most recent meta that everyone cries about is chaos. Chaos meta. So what's the next dynamic meta shift for us? They keep the interest, they keep the game interesting for always, us always to have something to bitch about that is entirely different from something else we used to bitch about. That is how the game works. Catch on to it by now, shame, shame. Let's keep going. In addition to generous rewards earned by fulfilling prophecies, you will earn exclusive microtransactions as you complete challenges. The Prophecy League includes a set of 40 new challenges when you complete. Uh, 12 challenges, you receive a Prophecy Footprints effect. 24, you receive the weapon. And when you complete the 36 challenge, you get the monkey, our little pet. These microtransactions are exclusively available through in the Prophecy Leagues. I'm going to go for this one. I didn't want to go for the Prentice one. I didn't think it looked that great. But I'll get at least this and this. These look great. The Rig Vault set was okay, but they had a, another set that looked exactly like it already, and I wasn't really sold. But these, these all, these are a, the additional pieces to the existing Prophecy Armor set. To make Prophecy look even better, you want these. I like that. They, they give you a challenge that is something you want that looks like nothing else. And this is exactly what we needed. Monkey is sick. Yeah. <laughs> mind over matter is the only meta and this guy's in there <laughs> freaking Matt, Matt you're like I need mind over matter let's keep going from the 19th challenge onwards for every third challenge after that you will receive pieces of a pro prophecy totem pole decoration to display in your hideout the totem pole permanently showcases how many of the prophecy challenges you've completed during that league I really like that End game labyrinth. So this is the level 75 labyrinth, which I tried to pull out of Chris Wilson's mouth. Remember during the last state of exile with him, I was like, so when are we getting those level 75 enchants? Nice try, he said. Well, here it is. Room the, the rumors are true. Ha ha. There is a fourth labyrinth and it's ex accessed through end game maps. High level players will gradually com uh, complete difficulty map versions of the trials of ascendancy to gain access to endgame labyrinths. The version of labyrinth features new puzzles, or this version of the labyrinth features new puzzles and includes an entirely new type of trap. Shit. I wonder what DJ it'll be. All right, the endgame labyrinth rewards you with a new tier of item enchantment and two additional ascendancy points. The new, to uh, the new total of eight ascendancy points opens up an entirely new build of possibilities. In this update, we're also streamlining the Trials of Ascendancy so that you only have to complete them once each difficulty level per league. So there's going to be a total of 24 trials. Complete all 24 trials, never have to do it again. <sighs> Everyone do that with me at home, you ready? <sighs> Feels good, man. Once, one trial, done, done. Complete it, it's gone. 
Hopefully they fix CI and ES based shit. I'm gonna ask on the podcast coming up Sunday, so don't you guys worry about that. Feels good, man. That's still 24 more than I want to do. I feel you, bro. I feel you. But take what you can get. So let's go into this before we go into the next shit. So there's so much min max. Let's take a look at these. So Blade Vortex is set at 20% duration. It's 30. So it's enhanced helm enchants, basically. Enhanced boot enchants. These are 8% normally. And it's a different war on kill. So it's an extended tier of what already exists. So probably more leech, more spell dodge, more attack damage, more cool stuff. Enhancing what's already in the, in the core of the game. My biggest problem with this is, holy shit, are you going to have to run a lot of Labyrinth? They better make it so what you're wearing has a higher chance of you getting that on your helmet. Not a guaranteed chance, but like maybe twice as much. So if there's 300 in chance, I have a 1 in 150 rather than 1 in 300 to get the exact enchant I need. Or, for instance, if there's 300 enchants and you usually have three per skill, guess what? They're adding more skills. There should, when you have that 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 thing equipped, you should have a higher chance of getting that on your helmet, which they very well may already have in the game. And we don't know. We don't know if it's even chance. GGG listens, man. So let's keep going into this. So if if I'm playing, for instance, the Juggernaut build that I played this league. I went to Unrelenting because reduced elemental damage taken in armor build is everything. Getting damage for what I get tanky with is great. Armor, damage, armor, damage. And then extra endurance charge, no brainer. And then the double body armor, which is arguably one of the best freaking nodes in the game, on top of not being stunned. But if I were to get two more, I would totally get unstoppable. I need movement speed. I'm a slow freaking oaf. So I get 14% movement speed. You cannot be slowed base below base speed. So let's say I'm playing a Firecaster and I want to be Juggernaut. I don't feel like I have to have this node, which is in fucking Baghdad. I could just pick this node up now. I don't have to sacrifice other shit to get this. Also, movement speed cannot be modified to below its base value. Would make it so temporal chains of movement speed reduction wouldn't work on me, and I can never be chilled or frozen. Or I can be chilled and frozen, but it would only augment that of my attack and cast speed, but not my movement speed. So, chilled ground maps are now my bitch. I don't care about my attack speed. I'm freaking Ice Crash already. I mean, fuck it. And on top of that, I can run Temporal Chains maps and not really feel bad at all. I could still play my character. Not only that, but I'm faster. So, awesome. This allows some severe min-max. However, there's classes like the Champion. Let's just reset. Let's go to the Champion here. Champion is so OP in the current state because... You get everything you want with Fortify, all this movement speed, you get this node, and then your last two nodes, you're like... Uh... I guess? I mean, I guess it's less damage taken. They're not really GG! So instead of nerfing the champion, by giving two extra points, the class that's considered OP gets very little. The class that's underrated becomes even better! You get where I'm going? So that's the that's the cool freaking thing now. So classes that feel like they just need a little bit more will get that. Whereas champion is still fucking OP, it's just not getting a ton of awesomeness. They said they're rebalancing this, so all this is pointless right now. That's incorrect. They're adding two new points for a reason. You sh you're quiet. So, really, if that's how you feel, if they're rebalancing all of it, let me show you something here. Let's go to here, the Scion. Let's say I'm playing a, a CI build, okay? Let's say I'm playing a CI build. I'm going to choose Raider because I can't run Blood Rage and I need Onslaught. And I want Frenzy Charge on Kill, right? I want Onslaught, I want Frenzy Charge on Kill. And then I'm going to play Berserker because I want the Leech because I'm about packed, right? And, you know, increased damage taken is not that bad when you're CI. It's only 5%. But I get a global more damage, and I get... Um, well, I don't really get Savage Hit as CI. But that's okay. But you know what? Now, with my two extra points, I'd be Path of the Marauder. Okay? Maybe Path of the Marauder. So, you see this right here? So, if I'm Path of Marauder, let's say I were to do something like this. 
Or maybe even like this. I can now be immune to stun. And now I can go play my CI build. I'm literally immune to stun now. I'm Whispering Ice, these are now in. You do something like that. Something that you normally couldn't access before, as the Scion, okay? Now also, you could always just go Juggernaut and said you don't need the leech, just be immune to stun when you're at max endurance charges. Fucking A right, and instead you could go over here to freaking Path of the Ra Ranger and pick up whatever the hell the Rangers got. So now you have all this projectile damage. Oh, look at that. I get Primal Spirit, guys. I get Primal Spirit. Now I get my flash charges gained, and I don't even have to be a raider to get it. You get it? Oh, well, I'm playing um, CI Spark. So you tell me if you're playing CI Spark, you wouldn't just come over here and get these points real quick? And look at that. Fuck it. If I'm playing CI Spark, I'm going to stick as Berserker. I don't need to be Juggernaut, Juggernaut, because guess what? There's my immune to stun right fucking there. And I could get Charisma, too. I don't have to go through all this. So that means if I'm playing Scion, check this shit out. CI Spark, for example, right? That's that's what we're playing, CI Spark. I can come here, I can get this. I don't even have to go over there. I don't even have to touch that shit. Oh, there's some more avoid stun. There's some more avoid stun. Now I'm officially avoiding stun. Come up here, I can get all this. I'm gonna need that plus one max lightning res, right? Maybe dual curse even. Well, I'm gonna need more crit. I'll just pick up this. Come down here. Okay, I'm done with my build. See this shit? This is what Ascendancy unlocks for us. I don't have to go through all the, the awkward pathing right here, and I get it for free. Or let's say I don't want to be on this side of the tree. You know what? Actually, I don't want to play this side of the tree. I'm just going to come over here. Because I'm playing C I'm playing CI Stormcall now, okay? Or maybe not CI Stormcall, because I still want Raider. CI... Yeah, we'll, we'll, still, we'll still say CI Spark. CI Spark. Well, I'll get the crit here. I'll get this so I can run more Blasphemy. Don't need that. I'll come down here. I'll get this guy, and I'll get this pen. Go like that. Oh, fuck it, we'll even come into here. You know what I mean? You have you have more options available to you now than you had before. You don't have to come over here anymore. You don't, you don't feel compelled. You can actually go to the Templar tree as a CI crit build and not feel as bad, man, because the sign allows you to do that. I'm only at 111 points. I'm in four different trees. Everything I need out of Ranger is right here. Whereas before, I, I, this wasn't even possible before because I had to have Valpac. I had to spend all these bullshit travel points and come into the air. Now I don't have to anymore. Opens up a slew of possibilities. Oh, yeah, you need CI. <laughs> well said, Twitch. Well said. Or even so, check this out. Fuck it. We're low life. There you go. Shh. Quiet. Problem solved. We're low life now. Well said, though, Twitch. This is why I do this live, so you guys don't go in the YouTube comments. You never picked up CI, dumbass? No, it'd be totally warranted. Absolutely warranted. Let's see what else we can get. So if I drop all that other shit, could I actually come up here and get CI? And then this, 118, what else could I drop? Maybe this. One fifteen, level 92, 93, 93. Pretty obtainable if you ask me. Holy shit, man, the Ascendant is gonna be overpowered as fuck. No, 118 is not 110, man. Because look, if I spec out of these... Oh, yeah, it is. Shit. Well, why is it bugged like that? Why is it bugged like that? Oh, because it took all these out. It wasn't bugged. It wasn't bugged. 
You scare the hell out of me, guys. It just takes rid of those. Gets rid of those. But you get two more skill points. You get two more skill points. Passive point, passive point. So you actually get three more skill points. So I have 112 available to spend. So this is level 90. This is level 90. Holy shit, the Ascent is overpowered as all fucking hell. Oh, Ghost Reaver. Okay, so now we'd be at the equivalent of 115 normally. What will you drop? Do we even need this wheel? I only save a point by doing that and might as well get these. But you guys get the gist. You can do some pretty fucking awesome min-max now that you wouldn't have the ability to do before. Like, do I even need this? Yes. And drop this shit. There you go. So this puts me at... 114 skill points, which is level 91. Level 91. And I can have all this immunity to stun, all this crit, Val Pact, with Sovereignty, Charisma, Leadership, and Influence. I have all four of the good freaking mana reserve wheels. Throw on a Heretic's Veil with Blasphemy. Problem fucking solved. You can get some ab absurd mana reservation now. Which means that you could go Discipline, Wrath, Herald of Thunder, Curses as a CI build because we get two extra points that were unobtainable before as the Scion. Now we can be Path of the Ranger. It's freaking genius. Pretty freaking awesome. I'm blown away. I'm blown away. Like, this build would be retarded. So let's keep going into other possibilities. Alright, let's keep going. So I'm gonna save this. <laughs> Good stuff, we'll name it. Good stuff. Good stuff. Alright, how many, how many, how far am I at? I'm at an hour. I'm going to stop this recording for YouTube. This will be part one. So everyone watching right now from YouTube, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to do part two. And again, if you want to watch this live in the future, any events like this, I host it live on twitch.tv slash Genius. And I'm playing not copyrighted music. Yay. That means I can fucking upload this shit. Be right back. <laughs> 